The following video manual has been prepared to familiarize you with step-by-step -step instructions for operation and maintenance of your T30 hydro seeder. To ensure maximum performance and the extended life of your equipment, you should study this material closely and review the information as often as possible. The program has been separated into four parts. Pre-start equipment check, operation of the T30, cleaning and maintenance, and troubleshooting. Your T30 is designed to be either mounted onto a truck bed or a trailer chassis which can carry at least 3,900 pounds, the weight of a fully loaded unit. Your T30 comes with several standard accessories. Discharge hoses to be used when spraying come in lengths of 50 and 100 foot sections. Hoses of longer length could adversely affect discharge performance and spray distance of slurry. Cam lock hose connections make for handy connect and disconnect capability. Once the nozzle and hose are engaged, the unit is ready. Control of slurry is controlled with the remote discharge valve. When using the remote, the recirculation valve must be open to allow return flow of product when the remote valve is closed. A handy hose reel option and bolt-on air gap fill port are available when specified. Refer to your manual for specific grade and procedures. Secure the drain plug. Make sure that the pump drain plug is properly secured. In addition, the suction line shutoff valve should be completely open. Specified lubrication points are clearly marked on your T30 hydro seeder. Lubricate each point as marked, utilizing a handgun lubricator. When finished, move over to check the automatic pressure lubricator which keeps the pump properly lubricated. Turn the thumb nut clockwise until the stem is fully extended. Remove the cap and fill it with a soda-based grease. Replace the cap and turn the thumb nut counterclockwise until it reaches the top of the stem. The spring and pressure disc will force lubricant to the pump seal as needed. Now check the nozzles and hoses, making sure they are free of any obstructions. Check all valves for free movement. Your hydro seeder is equipped with three independently operated ball valves for control of slurry. Each has an important function that you must be familiar with. The first is the recirculation valve, which allows slurry flow back into the tank. Next is the pump discharge valve, which controls the slurry flow and directs product through the discharge hose connected to the pump discharge. And finally, there is the remote valve, which connects to the end of the discharge hose. This provides fingertip control when doing an application at the work site. Before starting your hydro seeder up, you should turn the recirculation on and the discharge valve off as shown. Now ensure that the clutch is disengaged and that the agitator is in the neutral setting. Set the throttle to about one quarter open. Pull the choke control out. Turn the ignition key until the engine starts up. Push the choke in to establish even running. Now begin filling the tank with fresh water to about the halfway point or when it reaches the agitator shaft. Tanks may be filled from a stream or pond with a filler pump and suction strainer. When water reaches the proper level, move the agitator into the full reverse position. Next, you will need to purge the system. Start by removing the discharge nozzle and then the coupler gasket. Then open the remote valve. Aim the hose into an open area clear of obstructions and personnel. Again, ensure the valves are in a proper position and that the recirculation is closed. Increase the throttle to about half or three quarters. Engage the clutch with the electric clutch switch. This will flush the system. Continue until the stream is clear. Then open the recirculation valve and close the discharge. 
Inspect the recirculation inside the tank and wait till the stream is clear, then disengage the clutch. Replace the gasket into the remote valve connection and continue filling the unit. Increase the RPM to full. Ensure that the agitator control is in the reverse position for mixing. Now you may start loading the seed and amendments, lightest ingredients, first. Quick swelling seed should be added just prior to application. Add fiber mulch by dropping the suggested amount for your load into the mixture, sections at a time. The mulch should be fully loaded by the time the water is at the three-quarter mark. Should the agitator ever stall in the slurry or you hear a high-pitched squeal from the hydraulic system, reverse the agitator forward and then return it to the reverse position. A jammed agitator shaft could produce excessive heat which could cause irreparable damage to your equipment. Now add the fertilizer. Additional additives should be loaded as recommended by their manufacturer. When all materials are loaded, jog the agitator to the neutral position, then to full speed forward to ensure a thorough mixture. Slow the agitator to about half to create movement to all corners of the slurry tank. Avoid over agitating the product. Three different nozzles are available to meet your application requirements. The wide ribbon nozzle has a range of 35 feet with a pattern width of 20 feet. The narrow ribbon nozzle will spray at 45 feet with a 10 foot pattern. And the long range nozzle will distribute product a total of 70 feet, making it ideal for reaching those hard to get to places. To apply mulch, aim the stream into the ground and layer the material until you generate small pockets on the surface. Avoid spraying too hard onto the surface, which could wash away the seed bed. Starting with the farthest point from the hydro seeder, move the nozzle from side to side, distributing the slurry evenly onto the seed bed in a slow, even arc. When the tank is empty, close the remote discharge valve disengage the clutch and move the throttle to the idle position. When using fiber mulch, retain as much water in the hoses as possible, elevating the ends and coupling them together. You will need to clean your unit on a daily, weekly and seasonal basis. You should start cleanup by filling the tank to the agitator shaft with fresh water. Move the agitator to full speed, flushing slurry off the inside tank walls. Remove the discharge nozzle and coupler gasket from the remote valve on the hose. Now ensure that the recirculation valve is closed. Aim the discharge toward an open area. Open the discharge and remote valves and engage the clutch. Continue spraying until the stream is clear. Open the recirculation and allow it to flow through the system until it is clear also. Now disengage the clutch, idle the engine, and then open the discharge. Then put the agitator into neutral. Remember to replace the coupler gasket at this time. Remove the drain plug and allow the tank to empty into a suitable area. Because of the tremendous workload put on your T30 unit, minor malfunctions could occur. It is important to make certain adjustments immediately to avoid poor performance or even damage to your equipment. We have identified several areas where troubleshooting may be necessary. First, we'll look at foaming in the slurry tank. This foaming will sometimes occur when dry product is mixed with water or if there is a presence of air entrainment from excessive agitation. This may cause erratic discharge or a drop in pressure or spray distance. There are several solutions for clearing the problem. First, you can slow agitation, which will reduce the amount of air in the slurry mixture. Second, you can pour two to three ounces of anti-foaming agent into the tank. And third, you can reduce the recirculation time as much as possible. If an additive is causing the problem, load it last or consider an alternative material. Next is dealing with plugging of your pump or lines. 
Occasionally, a stoppage may occur when spraying, and you'll be unable to locate any plug in the line or hose. When this happens, the system has become airbound instead of plugged. To remedy, you will need to use the same steps as used for foaming. Plugging will usually occur in one of four likely places. The pump takeoff connection or recirculation valve, the discharge nozzle, the pump area, and the sump area. These plugs are caused by either dewatering fiber mulch or some sort of foreign object. Before doing any sort of troubleshooting maintenance, it is important to shut your system off. Reassemble the system, lubricating the rubber seals or threads, then replace the clamp. You can identify a clog in the pump assembly by a drop in pressure of the discharge system. If this drop in pressure is accompanied by a whitish discharge stream, blockage is in the suction line or sump area. To unclog, first disengage the clutch and shut the engine off. The sump area is located inside the tank at the bottom. It can be cleared in two ways. Make sure that the clutch is disengaged and that you shut the engine off. The easiest way to clear the sump is to back flush the system with clear water. The other way is to remove the drain plug and use a pole to break up any obstruction. In addition, you can reach down with the pole from the top of the tank and break up the obstruction. Then remember to replace the drain plug. Should you have any leaks from your system, do the following. Tank bearing leaks usually are the result of not being properly greased. The gaskets will need to be replaced. Also make sure the bolts are tightened properly at 25 foot-pounds. At the pressure clamps, the rubber seal may have cracked, been pinched, or sheared. They will need to be replaced. Remember to grease the seal before clamping shut. Leaks at the suction piping are the result of rubber seals being cracked or torn. They should be replaced and then properly greased before being clamped shut. Leaks at the pump shaft are usually caused by the automatic lubricator not being serviced or the wrong kind of grease being used. Replace the pump seal and service the pressure lubricator daily using a soda-based grease. On occasion, you may have to service a bad cover O-ring gasket. If so, replace and use plenty of grease when reassembling. When a leak occurs at the cam lock fitting, it may not have a gasket. Simply replace to use. If your machine should have a tendency to jump or excessively vibrate, it could be either a bent paddle or agitator. Bent paddles may happen when loading mulch in before the tank is half full, and agitators tend to get bent if large objects fall on them. In either case, the bent piece should be straightened for the machine to again run true. When the pump loses prime or spray lacks distance, there may be a problem with the suction within the system. This could be the effect of air in the suction lines. Check the suction connections to see that the rubber seals are in good shape. Grease the seals before replacing the clamps. Lack of distance may also be caused by low RPMs. Check throttle cables and reset to a higher setting. These could also be symptomatic to the pump or nozzle being worn or the suction being partially plugged. Use procedures outlined earlier to address these issues. Problems related to valve operation may include plugging during loading or operation, or a valve becoming stuck. Check for any foreign objects in the slurry tank. If discovered, drain and clean out the tank. In addition, plugging can occur if product is loaded too soon, before the tank is filled to at least the center line. Other things to note are, flushing the machine out properly before reloading, making sure the machine is running at the right RPM, and ensuring that mulch is not left to dry out and clog any of your discharge hose line. Seal the ends of the hose by coupling them together as shown. Finally, should you experience any excessive wear on your equipment, it may be from a fertilizer with a highly abrasive filler or from overloading the machine with too much product. You may have to change fertilizer and always follow strict loading procedures and load requirements. Too much time between loading and discharge may cause the slurry to become too thick. 
To remedy, set the agitator to half speed in reverse and disengage the pump clutch. Should the paddles ever become so jammed they will not turn, observe for clogging fertilizer, lime, or even frozen material in the tank. To remedy, you will have to turn off the engine and dislodge the obstruction. This concludes the operation and maintenance of your T30 hydro seeder.